In China, for a long time, many women were required to follow a standard of beauty even for their feet. Foot binding, also known as the Chinese foot, was a procedure to control the size of a girl's lower limbs, which, according to tradition, were supposed to measure between 8 and 10 centimeters. The custom is believed to have appeared with dancers from the court of the Chinese elite during the 10th century, during the period of the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms. It later became common throughout the society in the Qing Dynasty. But what was exactly this foot-binding practice? Well, imagine bending and occasionally breaking your feet at grotesque angles from the age of five. And that is just scratching the surface. So what was the purpose of this beauty standard? How did women react? That's what we'll look at in today's video. The foot binding process was time consuming and painful. Generally carried out in China between the 10th and 19th centuries, the practice spanned five dynasties. The foot binding ceremony was generally performed on girls between the ages of four and six. During this period, the feet bones were still made up of pre osseous cartilage and were easier to break and shape. The process began by soaking the feet in hot water or in a mixture of herbs and nuts. All except the largest toe were broken off and tightly wrapped in bandages, nudging them under the foot sole and folding the ball down to make the much desired hoof shape. Every other day, the feet were untied, painstakingly cleaned, roomed, and wrapped again. Small feet were envisioned in ancient China as a pinnacle of female beauty and a sign of nobility. The way of walking required to tie the feet consisted of minuscule, minutely detailed steps to avoid tipping over, a practice that ultimately tensed the pelvic muscles and the inner thighs. They believed that this muscle training prepped women for the optimal sex. Bandaging the feet was considered a beautification technique due to its perceived sinister ramifications. Having small feet was regarded as a ticket to a better marriage and a better livelihood. In a mainstream vision, this existed to please and seduce men, as they were conditioned to be attracted to small feet. Other sources have suggested that foot binding was not limited to the elite, but was also done by the working class to keep disciplined young girls who were disobedient and frolicsome. Women's work consisted mainly of manual labor, such as weaving, which demanded long periods of sitting rather than mobility. One survivor of this foot binding practice claimed that, rather than a male presence enforcing the custom, it was her mother who encouraged her to tie her feet. It was my mother who kept telling me that I had to have my feet tied, so I did. But I kind of regret it now because bound feet really cause a lot of pain. Historians date the onset of foot binding to around the 10th century. Some accounts claim that Yao Niang, a dancer under Emperor Li Yu, who reigned from 961 to 976, bound her feet in a similar fashion to imitate the shape of a new moon, inspiring this cultural trend. Others believe that since foot binding was held in high esteem during the time, female beauty could be heightened if a woman's foot had a similar shape. There is also another origin story. The Ye Xian Tale, written by Duan Cheng Shi, dating from the Tang Dynasty, circa 850. It tells the story of a girl who lost her shoe and married a king who was looking for its owner. Only her small feet would fit in the shoe. This story is one of the precursors of the European Cinderella. Feet would become disfigured and unusually shaped, and not just any shoes would fit, so women also had to make their own shoes. Made of silk or cotton, the shoes worn by women with bound feet were engineered to mimic the shape of a lotus bud. Generally wedge or sheath shaped, the ideal lotus shoe was 3 inches long, although many historical examples in western collections are between 5 and 5.5 inches long. Women whose feet could not fit in the 8 inch ideal often employed as many methods as possible to achieve the smallest possible size. For example, the foot's heel would sometimes bulge over the rear of the shoe. The heel would then be bound with bandages or hidden by hems of clothing. To achieve the sought-after lotus shape, sometimes extreme measures were taken to shape women's feet. In some cases, the flesh of the foot was lacerated, whereas in others, sharp objects were slipped into the bandages, 
causing multiple wounds. Both tactics were employed to stimulate the flesh to rot, further shrinking the foot. Although this kind of mutilation was deliberate, lack of adequate care, such as uncut fingernails or insufficient washing, could also lead to infection and flesh rot. But the detrimental consequences were not just limited to the feet. While the immediate damage done to the feet was obvious, the rest of the body also suffered as a result of the restrictions. Notably, women with bandaged feet had 5.1% lower hip bone density and 4.7% lower spinal bone density. Both factors added to these women's increased risk of hip or spine fractures. Although foot binding was shortly banned by Emperor Kangxi in 1668, he eventually overturned the restriction due to the pervasiveness of the practice. Foot binding did not really cease on a large scale until 1949 with the establishment of the People's Republic of China, although it was officially banned in 1912 after the 1911 Nationalist Revolution. Some families kept on binding their daughters' feet in secrecy for a long time. Even today, elderly women, especially from rural China, show their mangled limbs and tell stories of the time they had a painful pattern to follow. If wearing a tight shoe can already be a sacrifice for us, can you imagine having broken toes and spending years with your feet tied in a triangular shape?